Hello, this tutorial is an introduction to EndNote. I am using EndNote version X 7.5.3 for an Apple Mac, but most of the functionality I'm showing in this tutorial is equally applicable to previous versions of EndNote X 7 as well as those versions for Windows operating system. EndNote is a fully functional bibliographic database and referencing system. Not only does EndNote have its own standalone program which allows you to search, categorize and otherwise filter and sort references from online databases and local databases, but it also includes plugins that work with Microsoft Office applications to allow you to insert references and citations and automatically create reference lists and bibliographies within scientific or other writing. This tutorial is going to go through the basic application of EndNote, so the standalone application, and talk about some of its functionality. And in a separate tutorial, I'll go through how we integrate EndNote with Microsoft Word. On the screen in front of you, you can see EndNote. This is a fully populated database containing almost 1,800 references from my own research. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to create a new database and start from scratch. So I'm going to go to the File menu and close this library, go to the File menu and go New Library. I'm going to create a new library called Demo. So this has created a new EndNote library which doesn't contain any references and I've made it big so I can see it all on the screen. You can see it's divided into three or four panes which are spread across the window. The first pane is the My Library pane and that gives you access to uh, filters, access to groups and also access to other functionality. In the central pane is where your references will appear in a list and you can see they've very cleverly alternated the white and grey lines so you can very easily see references in your reference list. And on the right hand side of the window is information pertaining to the reference that you've currently selected. At the moment of course there are no references therefore none are selected. And you can see it gives you the option of viewing information about your reference which would include things like your abstract and things like that. And also give you an option to view PDFs or any attachment you have to your reference. So how do we enter references into our database? Well there are two ways of doing it. The first is to enter them manually, simply by creating a new database entry and entering all the information. And you can do that very simply by clicking on this icon here or choosing from the references list, New Reference. The New Reference window gives you the option of choosing what kind of reference you wish to enter. By default, it is journal article. It's assuming you're writing a paper or you're producing a report and want to cite journals. But you can see you can choose from many, many different types, from conference proceedings, journal articles, magazine articles. And when you choose on one of these, you've got the choice of what you have to enter. For instance, with a journal article, standard is author, year, title, journal, volume, issue, etc. For a magazine article, author, year, title, magazine, place published, etc. So if you know the name of your author, you can type it in, type in the year, the title of the paper, the journal it's published in. This may be fine if you want to enter one or two references and you have the paperwork in front of you, you can very quickly enter the information. If you want to add multiple papers or for instance you want to source those papers from an online database, this data entry format is not going to be for you. So we're not going to save that one. The way to swiftly enter entries into your database is to actually use EndNote itself to search online in the same way that we'd use PubMed or Medline or Web of Science in a web browser to find papers. In the top menu bar across the middle of the screen here you can see there are these three buttons one that looks like a little computer screen, one that looks like a little map of the world and one that looks like a computer screen and a map of the world overlaid. If you hold your mouse over each one it tells you what they are. So this is our local library, this is an online search mode which creates a temporary library based on the results of your online search and then the third icon is an integrated library where it shows your local and your online library. So at the moment our local library is empty. If we click on the online library 
Down the side here is some more options and you'll see we can search Library of Congress, Lister, PubMed, Web of Science, etc. So we're going to click on PubMed. As we click on PubMed, a search box appears in the centre of the screen and we have a choice if we can search for various parts of our paper, so author, year, etc. And the default is author, year and title. So for instance, I can search for one of my own papers. I can do a search for Clark, 2007, let's say. And there's the word heart in the title. If you type in these three, hit the return button, it goes online and it searches for any references from PubMed that correspond to the author of Clark, the year 2007, and the title Heart. And you can see it's got 54 references. Well, my name has an initial, so if I cancel that and put Clark, comma, J, and then search again, it finds less. I only published a few papers in that year. So if you choose those three references and click OK, it downloads those papers into this window underneath. It's just doing that now. And there they are. There are three papers with Clark J in the title, in the authorship, sorry, and the word heart in the title. And it's reporting these as record number one, two, and three. Well, I know for a fact that it's these two papers I was looking for, not this third paper. So if I select both of these two papers by pressing the shift key and selecting both of them, I can look down the side here and I can see some more information about it. If I want to copy these into my local database, I simply right click and go copy references to my demo library. And if I head back to my local database now, you'll see now I have two references in my local library. These are the two references that I've just imported. And you'll see here now in my library tab, I've got two references that have been copied into my library. If I click on any of these, you can see down the side here, it tells me the full authors, it tells me the year, the title, the journal, the volume and the issue. And if I just move the bottom window up, it also reports the abstract and a whole load of other information relating to that article. You'll notice over here that it says there are no PDFs attached to this reference. Well, here's a very neat trick that EndNote will do for you. If you right click on the reference, go down to where it says find full text and click find full text, it'll search online and look for the PDF version of that article. Sometimes this takes a while, sometimes it's quicker than others and you can see it's found one PDF and it's attached that PDF. So if I scroll down now, there is the full PDF of that article that was published in 2008. EndNote application itself gives you the ability to not only search the internet for references that you're looking for, but also gives you the opportunity to download full text in PDF format, which you can then review and read later. So let's add a few more papers to our database by going to the online search, choosing PubMed, and we'll change the year to 2010 and do another search. It's found three more papers. It's replacing the list that was on there from 2007 with a new list from 2010. And I'll highlight those three references, right click and copy those references to our demo database. So now if we go back to our local database, we'll see we have some references in our database. So this might be enough to start putting together a bibliography. But of course, if you're going a scientific paper, you'd need more than five references. But at least now we've got some references to think about. If you look over on the left hand side, you'll see there's a section called unfiled. This means that the five references currently in our database haven't been assigned to a project. So we can assign them to a project and a project is called a group. So we can go up to groups and create a group and we can call this group, let's say, my new paper. And while we're here, let's create a second group and call this dissertation. So now what we can do is we can assign publications that we've got in our database to a project. For instance, this one and this one are part of my dissertation and these three are part of my new paper. So although 
they're all now listed in my all references list I've now got subgroups where just the papers associated for instance with this dissertation or my new paper are listed here this is quite a handy way of subclassifying papers for instance if you're doing a library project as part of your degree but you're also writing a dissertation and maybe you're doing some research projects on the side it allows you to keep those references in different databases the beauty is of course is that all of your references can be stored in the one database but just grouped according to the projects you're undertaking so that's the basic functionality of EndNote you can search online and find the papers you're looking for you can enter them manually and then once you've got them in your database you can sort them according to the project you're currently working on and that's pretty much all you want a reference managing database system to do the next functionality of course is incorporating this into your Word document and that's going to be the subject of another tutorial.